Hi, so this uh, recording is looking at the movements that occur at the different synovial joints and we'll go through the different joints of the body and identify which movements happen at which joint. Um, as always, here's the specification. It looks pretty horrendous, but the white here shows the movements that occur in, in each joint and the green text is showing the muscles that create that movement. So it does follow on pretty logically. So let's get going. The um, movements here, flexion and extension, I imagine you've all heard about and um, may use the word bending and straightening in place of them. What you need to know is what joints do these movements occur at and you can see in the green bubble here. Um, they occur at the shoulder joint, the elbow joint, the knee, hinge joints and uh, ball and socket joint. But you also need to know definitions. Um, so the correct definition of flexion is reducing the angle at a joint, as in doing a bicep curl. You reduce, you make a smaller angle at your elbow joint. And then following that, extension is increasing the angle at a joint. And you will see that a lot of the movements that occur, occur in pairs, flexion and extension. So the next pair of movements that we're going to look at are abduction and adduction commonly confused, so I've tried to uh, think of a way to remember. Um, so abduction, if somebody is abducted by an alien, they're taken away. And the definition for abduction is movement away from the midline of the body. And you can see here and here that abduction happens at the shoulder joint and the hip joint. When you're describing movements, you should say adduction or abduction happen at the whatever joint it happens to be. Um, and then Obviously, the part in the movement to abduction would be adduction, movement towards the midline of the body. These two commonly, again, confused. Um, circumduction. There's a clue here in the word circumduction in that it, is a s it sort of looks a bit like the word circle. And you can see from the picture that one end of the arm is making a circular action, whereas the other end is staying still. And so you can see the definition here uh, of circumduction is a conical or circular movement where the proximal end, that's a very posh word for meaning the, the near end of the bone remains still, and the distal, the furthest away, the most distant end, makes a circular action. And that might be something like bowling and cricket. Rotation, on the other hand, is something a little bit different. You rotate around a singular axis, movement about a central axis, like you do when you turn your head to the side to look somewhere in, a, in, a, in many games of sport. Um, so here you can see that the two top vertebra of your spine, the atlas and the axis, allow rotation, as does your radio ulna joint, not shown in the picture here, but um, in your forearm, that allows the sort of screwdriver action. Two more less commonly used uh, terms, supination, where you actually rotate your radio ulna joint, which is probably about here, a joint between your radius and your ulna. Um, it's a pivot joint where you are able to turn your palm up. And I've tried to think of that as a way of remembering which is which. Supination is when your palm is up. Pronation is when your hand pushes down. These two, uh, two partner movements, horizontal flexion and extension. Probably the key word here is horizontal in that, as you can see from the picture, the movements occur horizontal to the or parallel to the ground. So horizontal flexion is moving towards the midline. Horizontal extension would be the outward movement again. So movement towards and movement away from the midline. Breaststroke swimming would involve horizontal flexion and extension in that arm action. Dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. So we'll commonly say for dancers or gymnasts that they should be able to point their toes. Um, so the ankle joint uh, actually has this movement called plantar flexion, which is essentially pointing your toes. A way of remembering it is both the P's, plantar and pointing toes. Dorsiflexion is the opposite. It's the movement of the toes up towards the shin or upward of flexing of the ankle joint. Um, and a very silly way, a dorsal fin on, the f on a fish is at the top. So if your toes are pointing to the top, it's a uh, dorsiflexion. So your spine can move you one side or the other. You bend to one side or bend to the other. Uh, lateral flexion is, lateral means side. So flexion is reducing the angle here. 
and extension is increasing the ankle back up to what we call anatomical normal position as if you were just stood up upright. Less common phrases, retraction and protraction. If you're sat uh, uh, on a rowing machine or in, in a rowboat, um, the action of reaching forward to, uh, you know, with the oars or with the handle, you'd probably uh, do protraction. So for movement of your shoulder blades or your scapula, your shoulder girdle. As you pull back on the stroke, you would probably retract your scapula. So that would be a retraction, the pulling backward of the scapula. Another little reference that might help you remember which is which. If you've said something that you wish you hadn't done, you want to retract that comment, you want to take it back. So retraction is backward. Again, some less commonly used uh, movement terms, inversion and eversion. A lot of these uh, movements occur when you injure yourself, you go over on your ankle, either on roll in or roll out. Inversion, then you can see, would be the inward facing movement uh, of the sole of your foot and eversion the outward movement of the sole of your foot. And this only happens at the ankle joint. Two movements that I see quite a lot in class when students don't know the answer to questions, elevation and depression. Um, when you shrug your shoulders upwards, pull the scapula and the shoulder girdle up, that's elevation. When you lower your scapula or shoulder girdle, that would be depression. And that, again, is purely a shoulder girdle movement. Quite an easy one to remember, I think. You elevate, goes up, depress, you're down. And here's a real sort of summary image that tells you a lot of the movements that occur at different joints. Take your time to have a look at that. You can always pause and have a look. Lastly, uh, if you haven't already um, downloaded the scan app, do that. When you've got it, hold it over this square and it will take you to a link on YouTube which goes through a lot of the movements that I've talked about and will help with your learning.